August 1945. Hitler is dead. Germany has surrendered. Italy had given up almost two years earlier. All that stood between the Allies and a victorious end to the Second World War was the surrender of Japan. The Allies had called upon Japan to surrender on July 26th, but Japan ignored them and the war dragged on. Plans had been drawn up for an invasion of the Japanese home islands, but casualty estimates for the planned invasions were astronomical. So many American casualties were expected that America went ahead and manufactured half a million Purple Heart medals, which are given to soldiers who are killed or wounded. To this day, American soldiers wounded in battle are still being awarded the medals that were made more than 75 years ago because we still haven't used up the ones manufactured to be ready for the invasion of Japan. Facing this level of potential Allied casualties, to say nothing of those that might be suffered by the Japanese military and civilian population, the United States made a choice. A secret research and development initiative called the Manhattan Project had created a terrible new type of weapon. A weapon that unlocked the power of the atom and proved that if energy is equal to the mass times the squared velocity of the speed of light, an extremely small amount of mass could be turned into an absolutely devastating amount of energy. With that weapon in hand, the United States made a fateful decision. Instead of invading Japan, on August 6, 1945, the United States dropped the first nuclear weapon ever used in warfare on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, on August 9th, they dropped the last nuclear weapon ever used in warfare on the city of Nagasaki. This is the city of Hiroshima, photographed from the air days before the bomb. This is what it looked like afterwards. Somewhere between 90 and 140,000 people died in the blast or soon thereafter, with an unknown number dying later on from cancer and other conditions caused by exposure to the radiation put out by the explosion of the atomic bomb. The city of Nagasaki suffered a similar fate, with somewhere between 40 and 80,000 people killed immediately, with more deaths following in the years afterwards. Rather than show you images of the victims, I thought I would limit myself to just one, I've specifically picked an image not of someone's body, living or dead, but instead a picture of a body that is no longer there. This is the shadow of an old person who was walking up the steps to get to the Sumitomo Bank in Hiroshima. You can see the cane they leaned on to help them walk. The bomb's blast completely incinerated the body while scorching the stone steps white, forever burning the shadow of the bomb's victim into the stone. The actual steps still exist, and you can see them and the shadow forever etched in stone in the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. The bombs ended the war, but at a cost of erasing two cities from existence. Okay, if we were in the classroom, I would now read you this book, Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes, the true story of a young girl who lived through the Hiroshima bomb and grew up in the city afterwards. We would then have a class project where everyone would learn how to fold origami cranes, and I would challenge your class to see if, working all together, we could make a thousand of them. Every year I've done this, kids have always hit that goal. And while I know this year may be different, it won't be for lack of trying. Here's what you're going to do. Step one, watch this video. Check. Step two, listen to Mr. Murray read the book about Sadako. Don't worry, I've managed to include the pictures too. Step three, learn how to fold an origami crane. You may have noticed I've actually got a video about this on YouTube from a few years ago that's racked up more than 80,000 views by now. Feel free to use that or another one. Step four, after you make a crane, Take a picture and submit it via the Google form I've posted. You can make and submit as many as you want, 
My all-time record is a student who made 1,000 by herself, and last year, every class I taught had at least one student who made more than 30, and every kid in every class made at least one. One last piece of info. You always use a square piece of paper when you make origami. It can be a big square or a little square, though the bigger the paper, the easier it tends to be. When I made my original origami video, I provided kids with paper already cut in the shape of a square. I obviously can't do that now. So here's a quick, easy way to turn rectangular paper into a square. So you've got your paper and it's shaped like a rectangle. Pick any corner and fold it diagonally down and across so that it hits the other side. Notice how the bottom edge of the fold is perfectly horizontal or sideways. When you fold it, give it a good, strong crease. Now, take some scissors and cut along the bottom of that triangle you created right along that horizontal edge you created. If you unfold the paper, you should have a square shape with a diagonal crease down the middle. And as it happens, the first step in making an origami crane is to fold it diagonally just like that. Whew. It's been hard work teaching you guys at a distance like this, but I hope you've had fun and learned a thing or two on the way. Good luck. Let us know if you have any problems. And please, stay safe and stay healthy.